Namaste, everyone. <clears throat> Thank you for joining in this class, uh, the Jyotish Foundation class. We are in class number 41. And uh, in the last class, which was uploaded as a recorded version. So we have covered the planets in the houses. Okay. So today we'll be delving into, you know, into the deeper end of predictive astrology. And we will be looking at planets in houses from the moon okay because the moon is the significator of the raja uh, of the yoga of the you know raja yogas in the chart okay if you want to look at your raja yogas you have to see the chart from the moon okay that means from the house where the moon is placed you will make that house as the ascendant and look at the chart from there okay of course if you have your ascendant in the moon uh, if you have your moon in the ascendant then of course there is nothing like it but then what happens is, as I said, if you want to see your Raja Yogas, you'll always see the, you know, you'll always see the chart from the perspective of the moon. Okay. You will see the chart from Chandra Lagna. Okay. So we'll be looking at the results of the individual planets in different houses from the moon. And these results I have taken from Manasagari. Okay. Which is a cult classic on Vedic astrology. Okay. But before we begin, let's Start it with the Shanti Mantra from the Upanishads. Om Sahana Bhavatu, Sahana Bhunakatu, Sahaviryankara Vavahai, Tejasvinada Dhita Mastu Ma Vidvishavahai, Om Shanti 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 Hi. Okay. <laughs> so Manasagari, which is a classic on Vedic astrology, as I said, it mentions specific results for placement of planets in relation to the moon. And, uh, you know, this underlines the huge importance that must be placed to the moon in predictive astrology. Okay. And uh, the moon sign is actually considered to be a lagna. We call it as the Chandra lagna. Okay. And the Chandra lagna is almost equally powerful as the rising sign or lagna. Okay. In matters of prediction. Okay. So, I'll be giving you the results directly as mentioned in Manasagari, but uh, you must modify the results according to the, you know, times and the conditions that you are living in, Desha, Kala and Patra. Okay. So if the sun is placed along with the moon, that means the person would be born very near to Amavasya or on Amavasya. It means, you know, these people, they will be their own decision takers. Okay. They will not consider any other opinion while taking decisions. Okay. And it also makes them travelers. Okay. If sun is in the second house from the moon, it blesses you with a lot of comforts, you know, servants. And uh, it provides, you know, it makes you command dignity from others as well as favors from the government. Okay. If sun is in the third house from the moon, then it means you are addicted to money making. Okay. And, uh, you know, it also indicates that. You are a, you know, you are a good people manager. Okay. In the modern context. Okay. So many successful managers I have seen, they have the sun in the, you know, in the third house from moon. Okay. I've seen that happening. All right. Yes. Now, sun in the fourth house from moon, this can cause harm to the mother at the time of birth. Okay. It can also... It can also, you know, it can also cause uh, harm to, you know, it can also cause ego issues. All right. Sun in the fifth house from the moon. This can bring troubles through daughters. Okay. Not through sons. All right. Manasagari has been very specific in mentioning about daughters. Okay. So if you, you know, uh, if you have a female child then you know, after childbirth, you can get into trouble. Okay. Sun in the sixth house from the moon. So this gives you victory over enemies. Okay. It also gives you, it also gives you many enemies. Okay. You'll not have victory over enemies if you don't have enemies at, in the first place. So this placement actually gives you many enemies. Okay. Uh, sun in the seventh house from the moon. This uh, gives association uh, with a spouse who belongs to a wealthy family. Okay. And it also brings uh, favors from the government. Okay, it is also a good combination for learning yoga. All right. Yoga is not the muddles that you see, you know, the twisted muddles that people do with their hands and feet. That is not yoga. 
Okay, yoga is something else. I meant to real yoga. Okay. Sun in the eighth house from the moon. So this is a problem because it creates, you know, conflicts within the family as well as it also gives numerous ailments because the sun is the karaka for health. Okay. Sun in the ninth house from the moon. So this makes you inclined towards religion. You know, it makes you speak the truth and the suffering happens because you are too truthful. Okay. In the modern day, if you are too truthful, then you, then you really suffer, right? So suffering happens because of your truthfulness. Suffering also happens at the hands of relatives. Okay. Sun in the 10th house from the moon. So this gives you, you know, fame. This gives, this gives you favors from the government. It also makes you have a good bank balance. Okay. Sun in the 11th house from the moon. It gives you, you know, it gives, it makes, it gives you a life of dignity. Okay. It also makes you a polymath. Okay. That means you are well versed in several branches of knowledge. Okay. Uh, sun in the 12th house on the moon. This can cause severe problems in your left eye. Okay. Which I have basically because my sun is located 12th from my moon. And uh, it can also make you give up control. Okay. So I, every time I get into this, you know, into this uh, nature of controlling people, I just tell Chalo Jane do. Okay. So it happens in some cases. All right. Yeah. Right. Right. I'll come to the specific parts. Okay. So next, we cannot have moon in this series because we are judging the planets from the moon. Okay. Just give me a just give me a second. I'll silence my phone. Okay. All right. So my moon eighth and sun third. Four, five, six, eight, nine, ten. Yes. So this will be eight from the moon. Okay. Sun would be eight from the moon. Yes. This is correct. Okay. Now let's look at Mars. So Mars in the first house from the moon. This uh, gives you a reddish complexion in the eyes, which I have. Okay. And uh, because Mars is the red planet, so it affects your eyes. Okay. And then, you know, Mars in the first house from the moon, it means you have to build your, you have to build a career on your own, you know, on your own strength. You cannot rely on anyone else to build your career. All right. And uh, it can also give bleeding wounds. Okay. Mars in the second house from the moon. So this gives landed property. And uh, one of your, you know, one of your offsprings would uh, take into take to agriculture. Okay, that is what I've seen. Uh, Mars in the third house from the moon. So this gives siblings who are lucky for you. Okay, and it also gives you, you know, it also makes you courageous. Okay. Mars in the fourth house from the moon. So this is a problem because, you know, this is a case where, see, Mangala has a peculiar problem. Okay. Parashara says that Mangala has one son and his name is Mrityu. So wherever Mangala sits, it will destroy a signification of that house. Okay. So Mars in the fourth house from the moon, most often it gives surgery to the mother. Okay. And then uh, I'll come to that. Durin. Okay. So it gives surgery to the mother. It can also, it can also give you vehicular accidents. Okay. But then it can also uh give you a spouse who has a huge sexual drive okay i'll come to your question during mars saturn conjunction sex from the moon okay <clears throat> then uh, mars in the fifth house from the moon so this can uh this can cause a uh, cesarean you know if, if you're a lady you can have a c-section birth okay or there could be loss of the first child Okay. Now, if you are a man and your wife has Mars in Lagna and you have Mars in the fifth house from the moon, there, this is the combination for childlessness as Parashara mentions. Okay. 
this is for a male i'm saying if you are a male having mars in the fifth house from the moon <laughs> and your wife has mars in her lagna then uh, it's a combination that you both of you will remain childless okay mars in the sixth house from the moon so this makes you very prone to you know prone to having enmity towards others okay but it also makes you very competitive all right see mars is the mars although it is a tamasic planet it's still a deva it is a still a devata okay saturn is a tamasic planet but it is a rakshasa right so <clears throat> mars since it is a devata in the sixth house it causes it makes you prone to breaking rules okay mars in the seventh house from the moon so this makes you ill natured okay and it also makes you have a wife or a spouse who is short tempered okay mars in the eighth house be very careful with vehicles because it can give vehicular accidents okay it can also make you a cold blooded murderer all right and it can make you very selfish it can give you a very lying nature okay mars in the ninth house from the moon so this is the combination of wealth you know you can get into very good government service and that means you can get into a high position in government service okay and uh, i've seen a very peculiar condition for people having mars in the you know in the ninth from the moon what happens is i've seen them marrying late and then getting a child that means a son in their old in their you know in their old age okay so particularly a son in their old age i've seen this happening in of quite a few charts all right <laughs> then uh <clears throat> mars in the uh, 10th house from the moon so this is again a good con uh, condition for having comforts for having conveyances as well as monetary benefits but then mars in the 10th house from the moon can make you very bossy okay mars in the 11th house from the moon it this gives you fame okay this gives you fame in the government all right fame from the government for example say you are a anti corruption crusader and the government has awarded you okay so that's how mars behaves in the 11th house all right it also gives you very good physical features all right now a mars in the 12th house on the moon so what happens is you will actually hurt people with your words okay and your words will also hurt your mother okay usually what happens mothers don't get hurt by the words of their children okay so but in this case mars in the 12th house can actually harm others okay including the mother all right so i'll come to the questions towards the end of the session you can leave them in the chat box all right next mercury so mercury is the bastard child of the moon mercury is the illegitimate child of the moon right so mercury was born when moon eloped with the wife of jupiter okay so what mercury does is everyone you know mercury because it is the bastard child of the moon it pulls away all the water from the moon okay so if mercury is in the first house of the moon it gives you it makes you emotionally very dry okay it makes you emotionally very dry and it also promotes low thinking you know how to derive benefits from others without being valuable yourself okay and uh, mercury in the first mercury along with the moon in the first house it does not allow you to settle comfortably in one place that means you'd always be on the move okay then mercury in the second house from the moon this makes you wealthy you know this makes you have a lot of relatives and money but then uh, these people are you know these people are very very talkative okay mercury in the third house from the moon it makes you you know it makes you it gives you very good writing skills okay it also brings benefits from association with politicians you know with powerful people okay mercury in the fourth house from the moon so this can bring you gains from maternal relationships because mercury is all about gains what are you gaining from mercury okay then mercury in the fifth house from the moon it makes you intelligent it makes you learned it uh, also keeps you immersed immersed in sensual pleasures okay because mercury is the eternal learner okay so it is learning wherever it is going all right this is the you know this is the predictive principle wherever mercury is from the moon mercury will learn all the traits of that house okay so that means you will learn all the traits of the house slowly but surely okay so say 
mercury is in the second house on the moon the second house is about wealth so you will have to learn about wealth building you have to learn about how to save money you know second house is also about food maybe you find yourself learning how to cook okay then mercury in the sixth house from the moon so this makes you a miser okay i have seen this happening in multiple charts you know people who say that you know my mother and my father are such misers they don't give me money or i have friends who have crores in the bank but they don't you know they don't like to spend i've seen this happening mercury is always in the sixth from the moon okay this is a sure shot thing mana sagari points it out and i've also seen this happening in many cases okay but apart from being misers it also makes you a coward okay it also gives you lots of hairs all over the body okay so mercury represents all the things that are over your body that covers your body okay don't make this mistake while doing charts don't think that hair is saturn there is a you know <clears throat> there is a thing that hair is saturn you know and that has given rise to another misconception you should not cut your hair on saturday from where is that come no one knows okay no one knows from where it has come okay mercury is everything that covers your body so what does your hair does what does your hair do it covers your body so hair is mercury okay always remember that hair is mercury beard is mercury all right and uh, then we have mercury in the seventh house from the moon so this means you are marrying for money okay you will have a definite intention that your spouse will bring this amount of money after the marriage that is the reason you are getting married okay please check this and if you have it in your charts it will be true for you if you have it in the charts of others it will be true for them as well so even if it's in the marka uh, uh you know house even that's the, the same meaning marka yeah. is from the lagna not from the moon from okay okay sorry my bad yeah my, yeah yeah sorry then <clears throat> uh as i said mercury in the seventh house on the moon it makes you think about gains from the spouse it can also make you think about gains from your girlfriends okay girlfriends i don't mean romantic relationships okay suppose you have you are a female and you'll start thinking about what you can gain from your male friends you are a male you'll start thinking what my female friends will give me if i help them out in this case or if i do this for them okay mercury is always about give and take relationships okay including venus all right now my uh, sun uh mercury in the 8th house on the moon it makes you an excellent money manager okay and it but there is a you know it gives you a dosha that is the vata dosha okay mercury in the 8th house on the moon it can give you vata related diseases okay vata means air air so if you have an imbalance of air you'll start having pains in the body okay you'll have you'll start having pains in the body all right then ah <clears throat> uh, mercury in the ninth house from the moon this makes you you know this makes you question your gurus okay this makes you interested in other religions okay it also brings about callousness okay mercury in the 10th house from the moon so this is a huge raja yoga because mercury is the karaka of the 10th house okay mercury is the actual karaka of the 10th house i always say that the 10th house has four karakas the sun the moon mercury and jupiter okay sun means what work you are getting you must first find a job you cannot you know you cannot do a job you cannot work if you don't have a job you cannot go to work if you don't have something to work for so sun is responsible for that okay then <clears throat> moon that means you must not only find the work you must also like the work that you are doing okay so the moon is the karaka for liking that work all right now no one works for free okay no one works for free so your work must always you know bring you rewards bring you give you a salary or give you a profit so that is mercury okay and finally you know you must always expand your business you must always get promoted in your work so that is jupiter okay but the main karaka is always mercury what rewards are you getting from your work okay so it gives you good rewards if mercury is in the 10th house from the moon okay and uh, you know it also makes you a leader in your family okay if moon is in the 10th house and mercury is in the 10th house from the moon that means if moon is in the 10th house and mercury is in the 7th house then you will see that no matter how young the person is the family members will always listen to him or her okay check this out all right then mercury in the 11th house from the moon 
so this uh, brings gain at every step okay and uh, it also gives multiple marriages okay i've seen this happening mercury in the 12th house again this is a combination from for being miserly okay and uh, this is also a placement where your children will not excel in you know in competitive examinations okay mercury in the 12th house from the moon if you have it then don't send your children to competitive examinations they will not excel for it and they will not excel in that in those examinations okay so see your chart before looking at a child's at, at your children's chart as well okay so i was having this you know today i think we had the neat examination in india so i had this parent who came for a consultation of his you know of his child who has dropped twice okay and uh, now he wanted to know whether he will crack it and i said that let me do the prashna the prashna was showing inaccurate results so i said let me have a look at your chart and you know whatever i taught you just now that was there mercury is in the 12th house from the moon okay so this the sun is not going to crack that examination okay so the prashna is correct all right okay so i'll just take another planet before we go to the questions okay jupiter in the first sir, house from the, yeah yeah sir, in cases like that you have to give the bad news to the client how do you handle it like how would you uh, say it well <laughs> that is the moment of truth for the astrologer you know you have to decide okay whether you handle it diplomatically or whether you handle it in a straightforward manner you have to decide okay i have had clients who have come to me for just one prashna and the moment i said it's not going to happen they never came back although the prediction turned out to be correct okay so that is a moment of truth it depends on your nature okay uh am i audible shannon is saying no yes. audible. am yes, i audible sir. okay shannon there is a problem at your end all right so it's a moment of truth for the astrologer okay anyways uh, jupiter in the first house so in the first house with the moon this gives you a very good personality okay it gives you very good personality it makes you extremely extremely wealthy okay and it gives you a long life freedom from body diseases jupiter in the second house from the moon so this gives you a lot of respect you are very valuable towards people that is the reason you receive respect okay remember if you have to see a valuable person if you are trying to hire a valuable person who will be an asset to your organization see if that person has jupiter in the you know in the second from the moon okay jupiter in the third from the moon so this makes you know this is not good actually because i have seen this giving multiple affairs okay extramarital affairs too all right and uh, you know but it it does bring gains to the father jupiter in the fourth house from the moon okay so this actually gives you comforts at your home but it will bring trouble from the maternal side especially the maternal uncle okay and it can also make you you know serve in the house of others for example say you are an interior designer you are serving your clients right so that is a con that is a combination i have seen this i have seen in many cases okay say you are a you know you are a highly paid computer programmer and the client has asked you to you know to fix his or her pc so that is also a service you are providing to the client by going to your home and working there okay so this is jupiter in the fourth from the moon okay okay so the wife won't be spiritual or anything right no no no, no 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 <laughs> okay okay yeah all right and then jupiter in the fifth from the moon so this gives you you know this gives you divine eyesight divya drishti this is one of the combinations but i have seen this in people but still not getting that divine eyesight okay mansagari mentions this that you will have divya drishti if you have jupiter in the fifth from the moon but you know i have my wife has it but she does not have this you know divya drishti okay so it depends all right it depends but you know these people they can judge others without bias this is what i have seen okay if you have jupiter in the fifth house and you want a you know a judge who is not influenced by any kind of biases then you have those people okay so these people they make very good auditors they make very good you know they make very good critics because they do not 
judge without bias with you know they 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 judge without bias not they do not judge they judge without bias and it also blesses you with lots of children okay jupiter in the 6th house on the moon so this makes you very indifferent towards everything okay it makes you indifferent towards everything but it makes you have a long life okay jupiter in the 7th house on the moon so this gives you a very sweet tongue because from the 7th house jupiter is directly looking at the moon okay and jupiter represents sweetness okay but then i have seen this in medical astrology this is a combination for having jaundice okay jupiter in the 8th house on the moon it brings you know it makes you very selfish okay and because of your selfishness physical ailments will follow okay why i say that because i have seen many people who are real misers you know they will prefer to die with having millions in the bank account but they will not give their money for the benefit of others they will start they will try to hoard their money okay so what happens as a result of that hoarding they become very weak physically you know they develop a lot of physical physical diseases matlab paisa kaise bhi chal nikal jayega okay paisa kaise bhi nikal jata hai all right that is the reason the bible says you know the love for money is the root of all evils that means you should love money but not love it enough that you are trying to hoard it okay then <clears throat> uh jupiter in the ninth house on the moon so this makes you wealthy it makes you very focused and goal oriented okay jupiter in the 10th house on the moon this makes you very disciplined all right now this is also a combination where one can leave behind everything to become a yogi to do tapasya okay uh one uh, old astrologer he told me that gautama buddha had this combination okay that is the reason he the, the that means siddhartha gautama that is the reason he left behind his wife and his son to become a monk okay jupiter in the 11th house on the moon so this gives you diseases okay this gives you diseases but it also gives you a lot of vehicles as well as you know other conveyances okay jupiter in the 12th house on the moon i have seen this combination uh it brings you a lot of opposition from relatives okay it gives a lot of opposition from the relatives but then if jupiter by chance if jupiter is present in a sixth house from the lagna or it is looking at the sixth house from lagna then you will overcome those opposition you will overcome that opposition from relatives okay so we'll stop at jupiter and we'll take the questions okay <laughs> mars saturn conjunction six from the moon it will give you problems with the profession okay it will give you severe problems with the profession unless and until you remedy it so be very careful during mars dasha or bhukti or saturn dasha or bhukti okay your you will undergo you know you will undergo waves in your professional career okay mars venus mercury conjunction eighth from the moon okay so mars and mercury combination is not good it can give you it can give rise to accidents okay venus and mercury combination is good it gives you prosperity after marriage mars and venus can make you excessively indolent in physical pleasures okay so it depends on where it is happening in the chart all right will mars in the third house of navamsha also make a cold blooded murderer no 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 i'm i'm speaking only about the rashi chart not the navamsha don't bring navamsha into it okay also then mercury in the second house of maraka a sign a second and sixth as i said Mar maraka is always considered from the lagna not from the moon okay then jupiter venus conjunction in the 10th house on the moon okay so wherever jupiter and venus are placed together you will be very ignorant or you will be very you know worry free about the about those significations of the houses chal raha hai chalne do it will happen on its own okay wherever jupiter and venus are placed you will become so carefree that you will start ignoring the significations of that house and that ignorance will bring you trouble okay all right then do you have any more questions what if moon uh, is placed in its own sign uh, like in the 8th house like cancer in its like if okay the moon place in the 8th house the 8th house moon is not good okay mm -hmm. no matter wherever it is placed 8th house moon is not mm -hmm. good because it is the maran karan sthan of the moon okay right so the point being even if it is placed in its own sign then what mm -hmm. happens is 
you know you will get a lot of emotional trauma and there will be a lot of emotional trauma associated with you okay but okay. the mother will be responsible for that trauma okay that is okay. one that is one prediction that we can make okay oh. yeah jupiter venus third from moon in seventh house from lagna okay so you have you ignore matters related to your marriage or partnership okay see that if you do you know you are you are either very carefree in that marriage or relationship or you ignore those things completely okay that is what jupiter venus combination does in the seventh house yes shannon hi um you said a uh, mercury 10th from the moon saraj yoga yes 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 how do i unlock it <laughs> make short term goals okay don't have okay, long term goals okay and um please tell me about jupiter again in the uh, like fourth from the moon ah uh, jupiter in the fourth it gives you trouble from your maternal side okay oh it, that maternal yeah. side could also mean your maternal lineage okay that means your maternal ancestors could also be troubling you troubling in in what way when you say like ah see trouble living people of course you know how living people trouble right it right, is by opposition right. ancestors will trouble you by giving you anxiety which is not yours you're absolutely right Okay. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so yeah, yeah. if you're getting anxiety anyone if you're getting anxiety which is not yours mm -hmm. you don't know where the anxiety is coming from then it is your ancestors. I'm pretty sure it's them. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> then how to return it sir? <laughs> how to return it? Okay, you have to learn Pitrushanti. Okay. Pitrushanti <laughs> is not done by going to Gaya, you know. You have to learn Pitrushanti. <laughs> Contact me directly. I'm here to help. Okay. okay. So we can't specify that with pending karma remedies. No, 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 no. Not at all. Okay. Not at all. Not at all. I've seen okay. people doing going to Gaya for five years continuously doing pindadan, and then mm -hmm. you know spending lakhs on remedies, but it still does not work. Got it. Okay. You you said uh, uh, Mars and Saturn in the lagna, uh, 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 it will create uh, problems in the career. So what if the dasha not, of not uh, only in the Mars, career, not only in the career, Mars and Saturn conjunction will create yeah. problems in your career. You know, uh, every time you have a Mars dasha or anta dasha or Saturn dasha or anta dasha, be very careful. <clears throat> be very careful from professional upheavals. Okay, I'm sharing the remedy also. Take a right. piece of magnet if you have. If if anyone has a Mars Saturn combination in the chart, take a piece mm -hmm. of magnet, keep it in your pocket. Okay. okay. keep it in your pocket but then every remedy comes with its fair share of you know problems also because if you are trying to solve a problem that solution can create more problems okay right. so it will give right. you heart diseases okay but if, so, if it has venus also sir with mars saturn mars saturn venus see saturn venus it means your relationships are gone hmm okay saturn saturn no no not aspecting conjunction okay conjunction. Uh, saturn venus yeah saturn venus means your relationships are gone your relationships are not nourishing you at all hmm okay and then saturn and mars what is mars mars is your vitality okay hmm. so saturn is taking away that vitality because saturn is cold mars is hot hot so it is you know <clears throat> coldness is coming into your vitality your vital functions hmm. have to be checked mm -hmm. okay so saturn is a difficult planet to deal with because it will starve everything you know it will mm. take away everything yeah any magnet will do right so yes like yes 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 magnet. any magnet a small magnet put it in your pocket so upper pocket like in a wallet or like it has to touch no no it you. cannot it cannot go if you are keeping it in a wallet it cannot go be below your waist okay so you have to find a way to keep it in your pocket so i just wanted to ask that it, can i also keep it i have venus also with it yeah 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 you can keep it at okay. least it will solve the mars saturn combination okay Okay. Yes, sir. I came in a bit late. Um, we started with the sun, right? Yes. Can you please tell me, like, sun in the eleventh again? Sun in from... the eleventh. It gives you from the moon. You said, right? Let me double check my chart. Yes, I yes, think... yes, yes. Anyway, sun in the eleventh. We are dealing with houses from the moon. So sun in the eleventh. No, 11th... I'm sorry, not the eleventh. Like sun in the in the night. Sorry. Yeah, it will make you. You know, it will make you inclined to truthfulness. Okay, and you will suffer because of that truthfulness. Yeah, that's true. Okay, thanks. <laughs> yeah. Okay, then. I don't think we have questions. Even if they're aspecting, aspect is not a problem. Twinkle G, only the combination is a problem. Okay. All right. So, then. so what if uh, Mars and Saturn is in Lagna? 
then Jupiter Venus is in the fifth house in Aries and Mars Saturn in Sagittarius. Uh, do you think they will do a Parivartan Yoga or something like exchange of energies? Yeah, it depends. Okay, it depends. Yeah, it depends. Because right, here right. you're looking at the chart from two perspectives. You're looking at Parivartan. You're right. also looking at the combination. You're also looking at the right. houses where the combinations are happening. So right. it's a three-layered analysis that you have to do. Okay, first, okay, first the combinations will give the results. Mm -hmm. Then the houses will give the results. And only then, you know, you can expect the Parivartan to give you results. Oh, okay, okay. Got it, sir. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank yes. you. Hello, sir. I just got a question. Uh, this is Srimanth here. Yes. Uh, yes. This, uh, question is simple. Like, um, I have Moon, Saturn, Rahu in the third house, and mm. uh, Sun is in, in the eleventh. So it's uh, it's basically ninth from the Moon. So it's, it will like I do suffer from my truthfulness. That's for sure. But uh, does it have any other effect? Like, because Rahu is as giving give, doing the ninth aspect on the Sun. Sun is in Aries. Like, Sun is exalted too. See, you know, <clears throat> the point being, wherever Rahu. Leave the aspect wherever. If you have a Saturn Moon combination, you will have a problem with everything. Okay. If you have okay. a Saturn Moon combination, you will have a problem with everything. Not that, not not that the every that everything is a problem for you, but you will have a problem with your perspective. So there is a problem in your perspective. You have to deal with that, and the problem comes because you have some un, you know, you have some emotions which have not been reconciled. You know, you have just brushed them under the carpet, and that is, you know, that is there. Next, right. Saturn Rahu. What is what is Saturn and what is Rahu? They are both both Vata planets. So there is a lot of air there. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you have to see if you know if there is any other planet which is placed either in the in in trines of Saturn and Rahu. Say for mm -hmm. example, my my spouse, she has Saturn in the sixth, Rahu in the tenth, mm -hmm. Moon in the second. So Moon is completing mm -hmm. that trine. So the second right. house is gone. The second house is gone. You know, her relationship with her mother is gone. It's just blown away. Saturn and Rahu, if they mm -hmm. are in a trine, then the planet that is placed in the completing trine, say Saturn in the first house, Rahu in the fifth house, if one planet gets placed in the ninth house from that now, that planet mm -hmm. is gone, that house is gone completely. Ouch. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's my so 11th yeah. house. So you have, but, to, uh, you have to expect that, you know, your signification, your 11th house signification will suffer. Okay, that yes, means sir, you, but... the suffering from will come from either friends or your network sure. will not stick with you at your difficult times or there could be issues related to wealth blockages. Yes, sir. I, I know this is not about Nakshatra series, but the thing is my Saturn and Rahu both are in Puru Falguni. But the one, yes. so, so it, Nakshatras theory, come much later. It... Nakshatras are about the mental yeah. impact that the planets have. Okay. Right. right. So they are they are about the mental, mental impact. Okay. So Saturn and Rahu, it always... It, it's a no-brainer, you know. You have inherited problems from your ancestors. Right. Well, the thing is, like in Saturn, Moon, Rahu, the my my uh, the the degree-wise, the conjunction is actually Moon and uh, Moon and Saturn together, and then Rahu is like eight degrees away from it. Yeah, yeah, but so... it will still impact. It will still impact. Okay. 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 All, right. All right. Yes. So you All need right. to Thank deal you. with your you you need to deal with your reconcile. You know, you need to reconcile with those emotions that you brushed under the carpet as a child. Otherwise, you'll be in big trouble. All right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, last question. Oh, yes. Will yes, a uh, magnet, magnet bracelet magnet will do? Like. Uh, no, 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 no. Pure magnet. Yeah. Pure magnet. Pure magnet for bracelet. It won't. No, work. no, no. Not bracelet. Not bracelet. Bracelet is not going to work. Just that. You know. Just take a say a horseshoe magnet or a radio magnet that you can find. Mm -hmm. That is going to work. Thank you. Thank you. Best is to take a lodestone, but I don't think we find lodestones nowadays. Maybe you can search for it in some scientific apparatus shop if you can. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So just one more quick question, yeah. maybe of the of the topic. Like my ascendant is actually is, is in the Rahu, like Ar Ardra Nakshatra, and mm -hmm. uh, my I'm going through Rahu Rahu right now, and actually it has made me spiritual quite a quite a bit now, and I've visited <laughs> holy places too. And lately, I've been, uh, you know, learning Rudram, and uh, because I, I just feel connected to it. Is there anything, any harm in doing that? Or no, no, no. Because it's I, I it's just... absolutely fine. It's absolutely fine. See, Adra means you will suffer due to betrayal. Okay, okay. okay. You will suffer due yeah. to betrayal. 
and betrayal will come mainly from friends okay or right. from those houses which are being ruled by by the ascendant lord okay right so mm -hmm. rudram is a good remedy that's great yeah and suktams too right i'm doing suktams too so just learning no, 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 and, no. You, like... you do the rudram that is fine you do the rudram but do it in the proper mm -hmm. swara because it's a vedic hymn so without doing yes. it in the proper swara it's not right. going to work yeah no right now i'm in like i i just do do only certain verses not all of them the ones no, try i try to do know. try to do try to do all okay right uh, start right. with yeah. the namakam cool. then go to the chamakam yes yes that's yes. exactly what we do yeah, exactly exactly yeah. yeah doing it on saturdays right now and pretty much on the weekdays yes, too so yes 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 so it's it's actually making me positive that's for yes, sure yes 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 you don't need to be positive you just need to be practical okay too much of positivity okay, right. is also bad <laughs> okay all right sounds good yeah all right all right all right great thank you so much for joining in i'll see you in the sri suktam class which will be live on friday next the recordings will be uploaded tomorrow or the day after namaste om gurave namaha